Greetings everyone and a big hello everyone, Freely here here and welcome back to today's Destiny 2 build video. Now in today's build we are going to focus on one of the most interesting and underappreciated grenade launchers in game, that before was considered a mean tier weaponry, but now is considered a king in his own category. The fight in line everyone, love it or hate it. Now what I originally had in mind was to create a Roy Synergize build that would work alongside the Skull of Dyer and Mahakara to create a super powerful and constant super build with the fighting line as hell. But that didn't go as planned, so I've gone with an alternative that works just as same as the original idea, but offers a whole lot more benefits such as a 20 plus damage increase all time, constant healing, super fast ability regen, enhanced supers and super regen speed and the list continues from there. This simple warlock focused build will allow you to always have the fighting lion out and doing the main work for you, and clears up groups of enemies easily within its blast radius. Also, if you're looking for a warlock build in terms of survivability and content where you're up against waves of ads, or if you're on your own, this build will come in handy. And of course, you could forget about the seasonal world coming around the corner, all you warlock mains are going to need a new loadout before you head off into uncharted territories. Good thing I have you covered. So with that, let's take a look at the subclass which will be the Atonement of Hunger tree line and its Devour perk ability. Now back in my Sword Devour build that I did a while back, I chose the Atonement of Hunger for its two perks, Feed the Void which will allow us to consume my own grenade for the trade of health regen per kill, and Insatiable which extends our Devour effect duration and also recharges our grenade per kill we get. Both these perks on their end are great for sustaining constant run and gun movement no matter where you are and when combined with the Nesvac Sin, we increase the overall flexibility of the build times 10. With that being said, we are going with the same method again, but instead of activating our Nesvac Sin via our sword, it will be with the Fighting Lion instead. The good thing about using the Fighting Lion over sword is that we don't have to worry about getting up close and personal to deal damage, which in most cases can be a major issue in some harder content. With the Fighting Lion now, we can avoid this at a much more safe distance if we wish. Plus, with his large blast radius, we can clear up groups of that easily in a single round. So, less ammo is being wasted overall. For grenades, any are fine to use because at the end of the day, you're just going to use Devour them to proc health regen anyways. But if you were to go up against something much larger or tougher, then the Vortex Grenade is a good shout for its damage, duration, and versatility, while the Scatter Grenades are useful, while Action Bolts are good for mopping up. For weaponry, your main tool within the build for practically 99.9% .9 of the content is going to be the Fighting Lion, and this grenade launcher is something of R when properly used, as it has some magnificent traits that other grenade launchers don't have. For example, its handling speed is completely maxed out for some crazy odd reason, allowing you to quickly ADS with a weapon within half a second of being switched to it. But at the same time, when paired with another weapon with faster handling speed, it will allow you to quickly react in the pace of the situation that you're in. Along the line, the perk Fin the Herd also offers us free added on extras, like increased damage against enemy combat shields, rapid kills against enemies affected by grenades can refill your magazine, and kills always drop primary ammo, and I mean always. Lastly, it also comes with a catalyst mod for a plus 27 in reload speed, so when combined with its max handling speed and near infinite ammo, you pretty much have a primary, secondary and heavy in one. The most important thing to take away from the weapon is the fact that it is Void Affinity, so it pairs well with the Nesvac Sin for what we are going for. Overall, this weapon is truly a exotic. With the Fighting Lion, I also paired it with a weapon of your choice that will complement its style, so using the Pillager SMG for example with its high handling speed has proven to be a good choice for close quarter fighting against smaller adds who may easily avoid my grenade launcher, or simply me needing something quickly to weaken the enemy that my grenade launcher just simply can't do. Its damage on the other hand is low at 15 impact, so it won't do a ton of damage, but it's still going to be a good alternative to switch to when my grenade launcher isn't freely available. And then our heavy, I've decided to stick with the Wendigo to make use of the explosive light perk for second damage, but this can be easily switched out to another weapon that has a void affinity, so you can make use of the Nesvac Sin perk all the time, rather than just relying on one weapon to do all the DPS for you. Now onto the stats, we don't have any important high level stats that we need to focus on this time round, as this time round, the only things that we need to have is the exotic pieces and mods, so whatever you have stat wise will be completely fine, as the freedom here is you can focus in whatever area is best suited for you. 
Now as a rule of thumb, recovery resilience should always be at least above 40, unless other reasonings, and it shouldn't be an extremely high number unless it's going to benefit your class ability otherwise. Now if so, if you have the room to add in an extra mod for your stat to work, then by all means go ahead and flex your stats as well as you want to, but if not, it's best to not overdo it. Just go with the standard loadout if you can. For your armor, the Nesrex Sin helmet is what we will be rocking with today, as it works perfectly with the Devour Lock aspect of the build. With its exotic ability to regen your void abilities upon kills, this asset will prove extremely powerful when combined with the Fighting Lion perks and high energy fire mod, for near infinite room clearing grenade launcher, and as well as to have constant health regen as you go. The rest of the armor will require you to have 3 void affinity armor and 1 solar piece. 2 void armor pieces being seasonal dawn and the solar being a season or armor piece as well. The void bond being used is only for the mods it can access, so you can use any other void piece you have, as long as it can access the same mods as listed. Now for the mods, we do have the following. Head, recovery and grenade launcher final mods. Arm, resilience and blast radius mod. Chest, grenade launcher reserves and stack on stacks mod. Leg, recovery and high energy fire mod. Warlock bond, dire artillery and from the deaths mod. Now with the Devour Lock perks in check, the build is now ready to be used in endgame content, where you'll face a large forces of enemies, and the trick with the build is how effective it is with clearing out areas, but keeping you on your toes with high survivability and backups in case things don't go as planned. Within the Tribute Hall where we do many of our tests, I found that the High Energy Fire mod, when combined with Stacks and Stacks, can allow you in theory to create an infinite loop or 20% damage increase via the High Energy Fire mod. Now to give you some numbers, here's what I've come up with against the Ogre and the Fallen Captain. Damage numbers wise against Ogre we have the following. Non-empowered, we get 11,881. Empowered, 14,257. Damage numbers against the Shielded Fallen Captain. Non-empowered, 11,881. No change. Empowered, 14,715. So damage all round is still good against Ultras, but nothing too crazy. With this info now, this does tell us using it against ultras it can take a good chunk of their health and wasting less ammo when needed to. But it also shows that it's not designed around boss DPS which isn't surprising for me. With the blast radius active, we can lock the charge by light mechanic via the fighting lion, and with that we will get 2 stacks instead of the single one. With that perk active, our fighting lion is now empowered with a plus 20% damage increase until we get a kill, but here's the catch. As long as we get a rapid kill, we will always have a 20% damage increase at all times, as we are refreshing the mod per stack. With the weapons blast radius, this will be easy to achieve, while at the same time also means that when using it against a ultra or boss, that buff will always stay active until it gets a kill, which is why this mod is a must have before it generally disappears for everyone's access. Looking into this further, with the Fighting Lion's Finley Her perk being active, its damage against shields will come in handy for extra mean of damage in the long run, and then we also have the higher chance of weapon auto reloading against enemy who has been targeted and affected by a grenade beforehand, and then we also have the ability to always have primary ammo freely stocked up, so in theory we will never run out of ammo, ever. But then we also have the Nesrex Sin ability and our Tom Up Hunger subclass ability, which will further enhance the amount of grenades and minis we wish to use, and always have constant health healing thanks to the Devour perk. Ladies and gentlemen, we have now pushed our fighting line from good tier to now god tier, and all of this is thanks to the Seasonal Dawn mods and the Tournament of Hunger subclass. So congratulations everyone for making it this far. In terms of end game content, places like the Menagerie is a great place for a small room design and mass of enemies flooding the area. With the way the rooms are designed, it will help our weapon in terms of keeping this buff up and going, and allow our grenades to go exactly where it needs to go. At the same time, strikes and nightfalls are good for their linear design, especially the audio nightfalls against the shielded enemies, which in this case here you won't need to match, as the fighting lion, with his perk, will allow you to do a bit more damage than normal. In fact, I can see this build working effectively great in the 920-950 nightfalls, as long as you have an anti barrier round weapon to back you up as this simply alone will carry you all the way to the end. And Gambit of course, because you know I do enjoy Gambit quite a bit, is another game mode where this build will shine because of how clustered the enemies will be. 
you will be able to make full use of the build at your disposal if you're looking for something to change your gameplay up or if you want to be a dedicated ad clearer. And remember, as long as you have that stack of light active on you, that plus 20% damage increase for your fighting line will always be active, which in the first phase, second phase or third phase of the boss is always going to be effective. It's not going to be too powerful, but it's going to be effective when it's needed. Overall, our Abyssal Artillery build is a crowd controller wet dream and I wouldn't be surprised if this becomes your new main for the next season in terms of tackling the new and harder content. This set will carry you well throughout your fights as everything in place is designed for surviving most harder tier contents and if push comes to shove, you do have the From the Death mod that will activate once you hit critical health and this damage alone is enough for you to do an insane amount of damage if done right aka you're getting a 30% damage increase with the activation of it, although it's not really needed if you don't need it. Its survivability and damage alone is great and the Fire Lion has always been a weapon that requires dedication for the user, although downside wise I would have added on the protective light mod for further protection when in critical to make up for the lack of resilience on my end, or if I'm tackling the 980 Nightfalls as it's always nice to have some sort of protection in place. The other downside is that it's not that great against bosses on the scale of raids or pacific ultras, as it's not designed around boss DPS but rather lower to major tier adds, so even with that 20% increase in damage, it's still good, and you've seen the test that I did, it's still good and effective, just nothing too wonderful. Except from that, this fighting line build is pretty insane to use, I recommend you give it a try and see generally how powerful this build is when it incorporates its abilities well within its environment. Now everyone, if you enjoyed the video, then a like and a sub would be really appreciated. Also, follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. Once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys in the next one.